Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you saw my video last week, I kind of broke down how we were going to do, um, sorry, brain froze. How we were gonna do our budget this month and how much money we were gonna have. And then I thought, you know, it would be nice to kind of show people what we purchase and how we make it work. So that, that's what I did this week. I made a menu and I went grocery shopping and then I basically just tried to film making as many of the meals as I can so that you have this whole video at your fingertips. A couple things I do want to address is number one, things always just don't go according to plan. So, let me put this down because I'm going to make so much rattling. So things don't always go according to plan. Um, as you'll see in the next clip, which is the grocery haul, I had forgotten a couple of ingredients, which was okay for me. I had stuff here at home I could make do. wasn't a problem. But if you were trying to do this and kind of relied on all of the ingredients of this, it would be a problem. So, again, I'm making this work best for my family. It wasn't a problem. I didn't necessarily go over the budget okay and it all worked out in the end also I did not get all of the recipes filmed because we had actually three nights this week where we didn't need to make any meals somebody um, had given us a meal and then we went out uh, for a birthday that's what it was I'm like I know we were out twice there was a birthday party I did not know it included dinner it did include dinner so I had the kids eat the dinner and my husband and I ate leftovers. And then uh, the the third night, it ended up being a church function, which again, provided dinner. So I didn't have to provide dinner three days this week. It was also a very crazy week. So I'm going to kind of go through this briefly, um, just with a couple of things that I know I didn't get filmed. There will be a voiceover kind of explaining more, more I, explaining more details the further along you get into the video and then I'll meet you back here at the end and kind of just talk a little bit about it. Okay, a lot of the, um, oh, one of the recipes I made, again, I was trying so hard to stay under $100 and so I couldn't um, do any additional things to one of my meals and it's on a separate video which will be linked down below and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But you can definitely add some things to my particular meal to kind of help beef it up. I just did it because I was trying super hard to kind of explain um, staying within this budget thing. So that'll be one meal and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, insofar as my lunches, again, um, having a, a meal brought to us, we had plenty of leftovers. Um, on my menu plan was no was no mac and cheese and then I babysit a couple of kids and the mom provided um, boxes of mac and cheese for everybody so that's what we ate because then it just pushes the ingredients I have for our family back one and the one that I didn't get crossed off or didn't do here it was potato soup I have a video on how I make potato soup and I'll try to leave that link down below and then dinner um, the two things that I did not get done this week is minestrone soup, which is leftover soup, so any beans, any pasta, any meat, anything, it just gets dumped into a bowl, into a pot on the stove, doctor it up a little bit, serve it, it's everybody's favorite. Um, and then Mexican lasagna, which is okay, because how I was going to make it, um, I've already done a video on, it was a collab with Abby from Rooted and Rest. And I had done that collab. It was trying to make things as cheaply as possible. She was um, she, she was so gracious that video, everything just, anything that could have gone wrong with that video did go wrong. <sighs> it's usually how my life goes when I try to plan something. But anyway, she was so gracious. That video is there and then you can check out her recipes because we were trying to keep things low cost as much as possible. So those will be linked down below for you as well. Okay, so let's kind of get into this grocery haul. Which, again, if you remember from my my video last week, I have about $424, I believe, for this month. And it's roughly about $100 a week to kind of make these meals, to feed my family. But God, but God, but God. He is watching over us every day. And my life is a testimony to that. He has been so gracious to us for, 
Always. <laughs> like, there isn't a time where I can say, well, it started here and it ended here. No, he is always gracious to us. And he has shown um, that, he is, that he is watching over us. Things like three meals in one week pushed everything back a little bit. Um, in the, in a video forthcoming, you'll see another way that God provided for our family. So all of these things, um, just to encourage you, um, always look for the little things, the little blessings in your daily life. When I started out this week and I realized how many, like I said, a birthday party where we're going to, um, someone giving meals, which I know someone's like, oh, thank goodness you have, I'm like, well, these aren't the kind of things we like. It's cheesy potatoes, which is very popular up here, and we don't like it. Um, and um, meatballs that I think were plant-based because they didn't taste right. I don't know how to explain it. They didn't taste like what I expected a meatball to taste like. I'm not trying to say this to, like, really pick apart it, but again, I could look at it like, thanks or I can look at it as wow thank you for pro helping to provide meals for our family we are going to be so grateful for this I appreciate it thank you for thinking of us and we just threw a little bacon bits on the um, cheesy potatoes I still think we have some meatballs left we kind of used them as a snack we were able to use them as a meal and you know God is good um, when I heard about a last minute church function like within hours of, of us needing to be there it was kind of very stressful for me I don't do well with last minute things but it turned out we had meal and it was wonderful and we got to do fellowship and we were there meal was provided it, it extended our dinner for another night Again, those kinds of things that at the time you're just like, oh, this isn't going, going according to plan, which is my first and natural inclination until you like, until you step back and think, this is a blessing and you need to acknowledge it and see it as such. But I'm human and I frail and I sin and that is what it is. Hello. Okay, so let's get into this video. I have chatted long enough and I know the video is going to be long. This way, this is a dollar forty in order to get the same amount it's over here. This is a dollar fifty-seven, so this is a better way to do it. That way, you can save money. Okay, and then I found this. So this is actually the better one for two fifty. Yeah, this way, do it. of us could have two and like my husband and I could have one to kind of keep on track um, with you know carbs and stuff so 284 for 16 I have a couple of different ones but so you can go with this and on Sundays I don't normally eat in the morning anyways Okay, here are the ingredients we will need for this week, for this challenge, but a uh, couple things. First of all, I kept thinking, okay, I have the beans in the fridge that I'm going to use for the taco soup. Well, the whole point of this was to kind of show step by step how it costs, and so I completely 
um, space on that. So I'm going to put right here how much um, some cans of beans are or some dried beans that you can, you know, cook really quickly and make the beans up for taco soup. And I'll just add this cost right here. Okay, so uh, for the recipes that we're going to do this week, I have two cans of oats, and this will be more than enough, but one was not going to be enough uh, for our family for what we would need. So we have two. I have told you before that I try to be gluten-free in so much as possible, and normally I would just make my own gluten-free muffins, um, but I did do this like I showed you, and I did this because the gluten-free flour um, that you would have bought, I would have bought at the store was all out. And so we'll just do this, and this will make 12 standard muffins. So that'll be enough for everybody to have two um, minus one of us. So there's that. I can go over there. And then here is what we're going to do for another day. And then I could have skipped this and just, you know, not had any um, half and half in my coffee this week, but I knew that was not a good idea. And then to kind of help fill, I almost never do this. In fact, I think I can count on one finger how many times I have done this, but I purchased the sweetened um, almond milk and this will kind of help fill up. And then I have this one for recipes. And then, okay, for the yogurts, I was not in a place where I could um, film and show you. There was just too many people on the aisle waiting and then, you know, the mask situation makes everybody uneasy about waiting around. Um, but the yogurts individually were 38 cents each and it was going to cost almost three dollars, I think, um, to get enough of those little yogurts for all of us. This was um, like 182. And so I just got one plain and one flavored and we'll mix them. We will mix them. Speaking to my kids in the background. And it'll give us a little bit more than those little serving cups. And it'll probably even give us a little bit um, extra for um, snacks. Because I didn't really plan snacks this week. Then for the uh, lasagna, I have one thing of cottage cheese to make the patties with those biscuits that are right here. Again, normally I would just make my own with the gluten-free, but I was trying to, to do this as much as possible for you. So I did purchase this, normally don't do this. So this meal will go a little bit over $5, um, but you know, it's, it's not something I normally do, actually almost never, so this will be kind of fun, something different. And if you're not gluten-free, you'll save a whole lot more money. So we'll do this with this one day. And then this is the chicken. So I probably shouldn't have done, you know, like discount packs because you never um, know if you can find discount packs. But to be honest, it's such a savings if I can. And so I kind of reworked some of the meal plans that I did. So here's the chicken and I'll divide this in half for two meals. And then I have a meatball soup that I was going to make. And I knew that meatballs were, you know, pretty inexpensive. And then instead of using ground turkey for the um, shepherd's pie, I'm actually just going to ground all of this up. I'll just put it all in a pan and ground it all up. And that'll save me even more money. So that'll be good. I can just sit this on the counter. And then this is what, we'll, what we will use uh, for the for another meal. This is the one that we'll use. This one, if you can't have pork, this one doesn't have um, pork casings. And then, um, I did not think of this, but I am going to be making um, fried rice for lunch. And I was like, oh, not everybody has soy sauce in the fridge. And so I tried to stop at Dollar General. I completely forgot. And so I stopped at Dollar General to see if they had any soy sauce that I could purchase inexpensively, and they did not. But they did have this for a dollar, this ramen. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ramen packets out, and I'm going to use that to flavor my fried rice. 
and then we'll have all these noodles uh, for something. Don't ask me what, but that's how I'm going to make that work, and I'm mentioning it here so I can remember later. And then, um, again, this is not normally how I would buy pasta sauce, but this is 90 cents. I tried to get um, a better deal um, than doing it this way, but I couldn't... I honestly just couldn't get a better deal. So this is the salsa that we usually eat uh, with our chips and we're going to have this as a meal. <clears throat> and this one was, I think, that one, this one was $2. And this one was a little over $2. And um, this one is the right um, ounce that I need. And I'll just use this one for the Mexican casserole that I'm going to make. And then I'm just going to divide this in half for one recipe. Um, they, again, here's another one where you can save. This one does not have wheat. And so I picked up these two, but if you can do the um, Walmart cream of chicken or cream of mushroom, whatever floats your boat, then it's more than half the cost. So I think it's like 70 bucks or 70 bucks, 70 cents for a can, whereas this is a dollar fifty. So that's a better deal. I have this for the taco soup and tuna. I showed you how this was a better deal. And um, some cheese. This is about six dollars for two pounds. Then we have four vegetables. We have some of this. We have some of this. And we have some of this. That will be that. Also for vegetables, this will be what we use for one meal. This will be um, mainly as a snack, but I think at one point I need to use this. So we'll have some of those. And also for snack, I picked up this thing of apples. These were 88 cents a pound, and so I picked those up. And um, here is some spaghetti. And again, not, not something I normally do, but this was a dollar and I was trying to be completely real. Um, this is what I use in my coffee, so I already have coffee. And so um, I'll just use this with some half and half. This is for the taco soup. These are the potatoes for this week. And um, I should have gotten more. I did not factor in potato soup for us one day. This would actually just be enough for potato soup. There are five potatoes here, so this would have been a meal. And so I'm going to put the cost of the potatoes right here, and then you need to double it because um, actually for potato soup, I would have needed more, and I completely forgot. Then I have some corn tortillas here. Some of this will be used for... Um, uh, the Mexican lasagna. Some of them will be used for the quesadillas for lunch. And some um, my husband will take to work for his snack. And then I have about, I think I calculated, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. Okay, so these bananas right here, I calculated for everybody to kind of eat as a snack, one a day. Um, and by everybody, I mean people other than me and my daughter. We can't do bananas. And these I picked up to make um, some bread with. So I would not. I would have normally just done this um, for the muffins, and I'll, I'm going to include that um, recipe in here, um, just so that I think most of the ingredients. It's just um, oats and bananas and a little bit of flour if you have it. So I'm just going to include it because it would be a cheaper way to do. Um, it would be another way to save a little bit of money. And then some Italian seasoning. Two dozen eggs. And normally I would do one dozen for a breakfast casserole. So I'm actually going to do less so I can put a couple in the fried rice recipe I'm going to show you. And I need a couple in some of the other things. So we're just going to cut down our eggs a little bit this week than what we normally do and we're going to make this work. And then we have two things of chips 
and one thing of onions. Okay, so here is my total cost. But I did, uh, like I said, pick up those um, uh, ramen noodles for an extra dollar. And I also forgot beans and I also forgot enough potatoes. So we're going to add that up to this and put the total cost right here for you. Okay, for breakfast this morning, we are doing a bar and a banana. And if you'll notice, there's only five because my husband and I don't like to eat first thing in the morning. And we got to get going today. So that's what's for breakfast. Today's lunch, I am just going to be making a very simple fried rice. And here I am just taking the seasoning packets out of the ramen, ramen noodles. They were devoured by growing kids. It was wonderful. Um, anyway, this is cold rice and that is the key thing to making fried rice. You want to use it cold. And I noticed I pulled the eggs that I had left over from the fridge, but I calculated how many eggs I was going to need this month so, or this week. So even though I don't actually have the right eggs <laughs> that I purchased, I wanted to use up these ones first. Um, I did not go over my egg count for this week. I actually went under one egg. I had one egg left over from the two dozen I bought. Um, I just added a little water here. It kind of felt that it just needed a little bit. Um, I am using my electric skillet and I noticed that it doesn't fry very well because it, it does have that Teflon, I think it's called. And so um, I just had some water to kind of add a little bit of moisture. It was drying out too fast. And then I added some olive oil on top and about uh, maybe a third of that bag of mixed veggies. Then add a little bit more oil to the pan and then put a couple eggs in there, fry it up, mix it all in. The protein count will be a little bit lower, but later on in the video, you're going to see me cook up chicken and I divided it um, into two meals, but then we had a little bit of chicken left over from that and I just added it back into here. Um, this night, I did a lot of stuff to, on this night. So here I am making the baked oatmeal and I'm just adding all my ingredients. I will leave the recipe down below for you, um, but it's very simple. And I like to make my recipes the night before, especially my breakfasts, let me rephrase that. I like to put my breakfasts together the night before because I am not awake in the morning. And so on this night, I made the baked oatmeal for the next morning, but I also made the breakfast bake that I have done a video for and I'll leave that link down below but I also made that this night so that on the following day which is our Monday um, it would have been an easy thing to just pull out of the fridge heat it up really quickly we do have a microwave and I use it um, Also for this baked oatmeal, my we had some peaches that um, were given to us and they were going bad really quickly and so they weren't ones that we could eat so I just put them in here and it was so good. that uh, breakfast casserole again the video that I did showing a couple ways how to do this is linked down below for you we had both this casserole twice and the oatmeal bake twice oh, okay I've seen this done on some videos you snap your fingers and then <gasps> it worked scrambled eggs appeared <gasps> whoa the editing software still works you can laugh I did too I was totally making fun. We all have to chuckle a little bit when we're working. Does anybody else listen to Big Band as you do all this homemaking stuff? I don't know, little Donna Ree just kind of pops into my memory and I have to have all the Big Band going. Anyway, this is that chicken that I 
did up and see there was that much portion left to make um, for the fried rice the other night. And then this is the meatball soup. And I'll leave the recipe that I use linked down below. But it's really just what you would put in a chicken soup. But you just use meatballs instead of the chicken. And it was so good. There was no leftovers. And I just put it on high pressure for about 10 minutes and then added all the spinach in it. This is spinach that I had in the fridge and it needed to be used up. I just added it all in and then added about a splash of the half and half, except it ended up being a little bit too white looking for me for soup. And so I have this tip that I do when I see stuff like this. I will take out the spiced turmeric and I just lightly sprinkle it over the top. Turmeric's amazing for our health. Uh, supposedly, at least that's what I read. And then it just kind of yellows up the soup a little bit like you would get with chicken broth. And oh my goodness, there was no leftovers for this. It was so good. Okay, here I'm actually going to show you how I make our tuna patties. And I assumed people knew what these were. I actually originally saw this recipe in the Trim Healthy Mama Table Cookbook. And I've just kind of adapted it for us. And so here are three or four. I don't remember which. Three or four cans of tuna. Oh, we bought that four pack. So four cans of tuna, um, an onion, a couple of eggs, and at some point, oh yes. So this is a gluten-free, like panko, panko, panko um, mix that is in California and my family sends it to me because I cannot find it out here. Um, but I did about, I don't know, half a cup of that and about a third cup of Parmesan, some dill, always do dill, um, some chives, a little bit of mayo, and honestly, I don't measure. It's just been, I've made it so much that I keep doing it. I did not have any fresh cilantro. Fresh cilantro with the dill tastes so good with this. Today, I ended up putting a little bit of mustard in it. I don't normally do that, but I kind of wanted a, a little bit of a different taste to it. Um, I have one son that doesn't like these tuna patties, um, but he ate them this time. He actually ate more than anybody else. He kind of loved that little kick to it. And I thought he might, but honestly, if you have the dill in here, I don't know if it's necessary. For this recipe, I'm gonna be showing you the simplest thing. Like you really don't need me to show you how to do this, but I'm making the uh, pesto pasta. And then I just add a whole bunch of onions, some garlic, some peppers and then just throw the sausage on top and then you take your pesto pasta and you have a great way to eat a very simple and easy dinner great for those crazy nights that we all tend to have once in a while right this is another way I would highly recommend doing it this way I just roasted it and I'm showing you how I do it because I I make meals for another couple and I knew they don't like vegetables and this is kind of a, a basis for this meal is all these bell peppers right and so I actually roasted this in a 400 degree um, oven for about 20 minutes and I would say it needed a little bit longer um, and then I had the rest of the zucchini left from the garden and so I cooked those up because they really needed to be done and then I added more vegetables to our meals and the, that's what I really love about this simple meal is that you can add all the vegetables you want to it. I'm going to do about half a jar and actually once I stir it up I add another spoonful of pesto here and then the other half of that pesto you're actually going to use in another meal later and I'm going to show you kind of what I do with that. So I did manage to save some for my husband for lunch. This is pretty much what was left. It was delicious for breakfast this morning. Those are muffins and I forgot to make a video for it, but don't worry, the recipe is left down below. And then that is the mixture of the two yogurts and then those are some peach butter that we had that you could dip on top. And then I'm showing you how to doctor up that spaghetti sauce. So the meat and ingredients are oregano, parmesan, noodles, some red wine, or red wine vinegar, your pasta sauce, and the rest of that pesto. This is your secret ingredients, folks. Barbecue sauce, the smoky kind, and I did not put enough in here. We added more afterwards, and it was delicious. It may not be the taste for everybody, but it really helps doctor up those spaghetti nights. Here I am going to make a chicken pot pie. I've made this before. I actually make a lot of our chicken pot pies using Farmhouse on Boone. 
but this time I just did kind of what I would expect um, your basic average chicken pot pie to be. Just a cream of mushroom soup, some mixed vegetables, salt and pepper. Definitely do not need uh, salt, note to self next time, Italian seasoning. And this is when I realized, ooh, I did not buy any kind of biscuit mix at Walmart. Again, I just used what I had here because that was the best thing frugally. I had wanted to show how much or how accurate the cost would be on all this, but it just didn't quite make it this week. I'm sorry, it, it happens and well, I'm doing what's best for us in the long run. Just going to uh, make up a batch of biscuits. I had the gluten-free flour here and so I just did a Bob's Red Mill um, biscuits to put on top. I also cooked up a little bit more vegetables. I cooked up some onion and bell pepper and um, some of the potatoes and you'll actually see me use this again later on in the video and then here are the biscuits that I just made and topped on top and it was delicious guys I'm sorry this is dinner tonight um, I just took that uh, ground sausage Oh, it was the meatballs that um, um, I got on clearance. I put it in this pan, so the whole thing of sausage was about a pound. Um, a can of the Progresso cream of mushroom soup that you saw me purchase, and a bag of the um, the rest of the bag of the mixed vegetables, and oh, and some Italian seasoning. I did not add any salt. I figured between the uh, sausage and the um, the cream of mushroom soup there was going to be plenty and then I actually had my daughter make some uh, mashed potatoes here and so in here is just some butter mashed potatoes um, a little bit of milk and some paprika and I'm going to actually put a little bit of dill and then I will top this and pop it in the oven um, these are just some meatballs and I'm, they're just right here, but they're not part of this meal, but my kids were trying to snack and somebody had delivered that. So I just said, eat a meatball because that'll be filling. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to pop this into the oven at 350 for 20 ish minutes. I actually remembered I had a little bit of this left over. Um, this is some diced potatoes, onion, and um, bell pepper I think it was for the chicken pot pie I I think so I can't remember but I'm just gonna put it in here because then there's some onion and garlic and it's potato so whatever and then I also added some chive I have some chive in my cupboard so I also added some chive in here so here is that um, quesadilla again I'm not gonna show you how to make it it's just corn tortillas with cheese in between some chips and salsa and I put an apple and some carrots on the table and this was lunch. I tried to edit this video, put it all up for you, and then I was like, I should probably have talked about the recipes that we did again because we didn't get all of the, um, all of them done. Also, I did not mention in any of this, and there was nowhere to put it in a voiceover, one of the Sorry. breakfasts, okay, I had last minute babysitting. It's going to be chaotic. This is why I try to film when it's all quiet and I can't really do that today. Okay, um, I had nowhere to put it in a voiceover, so I wanted to tell you one of the breakfast recipes, which is a um, biscuit sausage um, like sandwich, is in a separate video, and that's going to be linked down below. And then the egg um, bake, we had that twice, and then the baked oatmeal, we had that twice. So there's four meals, plus your biscuits and sausage, plus those granola bars, and then the yogurt and muffins. The lunches, we did the tuna cakes, um, spaghetti, the quesadilla, chips and salsa, the taco soup that um, didn't get filmed. We had leftovers. We had the fried rice. You saw me make that. And as of yet, we did not do the potato soup. Um, and then instead of the potato soup, which again, I'll leave that link down below, the recipe that I used for that, we had that mac and cheese. So those were the seven lunches. And then dinner, again, remember we had three meals that we weren't a part of. But I'll tell you the plan 
that was there for that. And that was um, the penne pasta with the sausage and the roasted or the, the vegetables. I showed you that, the meatball soup, the shepherd's pie, the chicken pot pie. The other recipes that were not done was um, the Mexican lasagna with, um, and I did a video on that, that's the one I did in a collab, um, chicken tetrazzini, which is a money saving mom recipe, or I've seen it on Money Saving Mom, and I just kind of use that as a baseline and then kind of adapt it to our family. And then minestrone soup, which is just your leftover soup. So those are the recipes that I had planned out for this week and that we ended up mostly doing. Okay, that's what happened this week. Um, I can't remember if I talked about it in the video yet, or actually I'm just filming this before I do the voiceover, so we'll see where we get. But the taco soup. So I actually forgot to pick up the camera and film the taco soup, but it made two portions. Like I had, I we had some for lunch, and then I had a whole nother thing that I put in a Ziploc bag and put in the freezer. It wasn't very flavorful. I think I needed to add two packs of taco seasoning to it. Um, so I'm just gonna buy a 45 cent pack of taco seasoning, throw it in there with maybe a little bit more um, chicken broth to kind of you know boist it oyster it up a little bit and then I have a whole nother meal and what's in the taco soup again I forgot to pick up the camera it's you know very simple it was pinto beans I've, I've made it with just pinto beans before but I made it with pinto beans and with white beans just because I had the white beans available at my fingertips and so we did that so um anyway things like that again I knew I had all of those ingredients so I didn't put it on the grocery list can you think okay oh the two types of beans the one can of corn with the juice um about a cup no more like two cups of chicken broth um one can of diced tomatoes one can of olives chopped up again that wasn't presented threw some sour cream on top some cheese ate it boom that's taco soup and you can do whatever you want with it i did not put any meat in it okay so that's going to be the video i hope this was helpful. I hope all of this laid out. Again, this was um, servings for eight. Let me actually, I don't remember if this works. Anyway, this was a servings for eight because um, my husband takes leftovers the next day and that's how he and um, how he eats. So breakfast, he needs a breakfast every day. Actually, he, we haven't really been eating. My husband and I, neither of us have been eating. It's like unintentionally intermittent fasting. We just don't like eating first thing in the morning eat at lunch because well yeah it's about time we wake up and are hungry and so but it's easily adaptable to add us back in if that's something except for the bar day anyway but I, I just kind of shared anyway try to make it for eight people try to make it as gluten-free as possible I explained the exception and I think that's it I hope this video is helpful. I hope this um, give you some inspiration, some ideas. Stay tuned. I'm still working on more. This is a lot of work, so it takes a little bit of time. But I hope it's worth it. So next Monday, I'll kind of go back over with you some of the ways to bring in income. It's okay. Just leave it alone. Some of the ways to bring in income to your family while you're a stay-at-home wife, mom, homeschooling, if that's what you're doing right now. Anything. Just... Things that you can do just to help your family. And I need to get going. My kid is jumping on the bed. And you are precariously placed on top of bath tissues to make it taller. So I need to go before this topples towards me. I'll see you next Monday if you're doing the How to Live Off of uh, series. And yeah, okay, I gotta go. See ya.